I'm here with Dr. Romano to look at organic chemistry mechanisms. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Dat Destroyer and Orgo Man books. What I'd like to go over with you today is a problem involving the organic mechanisms, SN1, E1, E2, SN2, and making a decision on which mechanism is competing with which one and how the, the product distribution will look. So come around and let's have a look. I give you in this problem a tertiary halide. And what I do is treat it with methanol. And I want you to give me the two possible products. Well, obviously an SN2 can occur because it's too sterically hindered. So the only thing that could occur, I'm hoping you agree, is the leaving group would leave and you would form a carbocation. Now, if you form a carbocation, we get a tertiary, so there's no shifting. That means there's two possibilities. The nucleophile, the CH3OH, could attack here, deprotonate it, and give you the OCH3 group right here. So that's one product, and that would be the SN1 mechanism. Now, competing against the SN1 mechanism is the E1 mechanism. So we go back, we form our same carbocation, and what we could do instead of attacking this, we can remove an adjacent hydrogen. Always go internal, meaning what we call the Zaitsev rule, meaning you want to form the more substituted alkene. So if you did that, you would form the E1 product. So this mechanism would be SN1 and E1. SN1 would be the major product. E1 would be the minor. But if you would have heated this up, then E1 would have been the major and SN1 would have been the minor product. In this next one, you have a tertiary halide with a very strong base. And once again, that's going to favor what we call the E2 mechanism. So on the E2 mechanism, once again, you are going to get the Zaitsev product. Competing against this would be SN2, but on a tertiary halide, it's almost going to be the major product exclusively as the E2 product. So you would get the Zaitsev product maybe in 90% form. In the next reaction, I do a similar reaction, and we have T-butoxide. Let me just put the solvent in. You would take the solvent would be T-butyl alcohol. And when I do that, you are going to get another E2, but this time you're going to get the less substituted alkene, and that's going to be the E2, but instead of being Zaitsev, this would be what we call the Hoffman product. All right. Next. That's A. And then I ask you to treat this with HBr and peroxide. What that's going to do is put a bromine on the very end. So let me just erase this just to make some room. So B would be this right here, where the bromine would be on the very end. And finally, this is a primary halide. And if it's a primary halide with cyanide, cyanide loves to do the SN2 reaction. So what I'm going to do is to replace this with a cyanide, and you would get SN2. You might get a little competition from the E2 on this, but I'm going to keep life simple and just call it an SN2. So as you can see, we got a whole spectrum of mechanisms. We got the SN1 and the E1 when you treated it with methanol. When you treated it with strong bases, we could have went Zaitsev, or if you used a bulky base like T-butoxide, you went Hoffman. And then I just did a little fancy footwork here with HBr and peroxide, made a primary halide, NACN gave you an SN2. Usually cyanide does good SN2 reactions. All right, I'm going to end the tape here. This should give you some idea on how to go about doing this. All right, good day to you. If you have any other questions, hit me up on the study group. Bye-bye.